Yes, guys, we're back again. We're on the last part of the moments chapter, and this one's all about tilting. So what is tilting? Now, I'm pretty sure you've got a rough idea of what tilting is, right? Um, but here's like a little definition or something that you should remember about tilting. Now, we've got when a rigid body is on the point of tilting about a pivot, the reaction force at the other support is zero. Now, at the moment, you're like, what is this guy on about? Like, what's he talking about? So here's a few diagrams that should hopefully clear things up for you. Now, we've got this beam and it's on two supports, A and B. Now, obviously, we've got this elephant down the bottom. He's pretty heavy, clearly. So now what I want you to do is think about if I took the elephant and put him on maybe the end of the seesaw, just over here, then what's going to happen? Obviously, he's super heavy, right? So he's going to start to tip the seesaw downwards. And what is going to happen when he tilts it downwards? We're going to get a situation that looks like this, where potentially he's going to tip it so far that this part of the rod is going to start to lift off B. And that's what we've got to be thinking about, right? Because remember what we learned about earlier. We said, if this is about to tilt about A, which is what it's doing, this is called tilting about A, the reaction at the other support is equal to zero. Now, why is that? That's because we can potentially say that this is not really going to be in contact with this support anymore. Okay, so that's what we need to picture in our head. So I'm just going to write this down for you as well. This here is called tilting about A. And what that means then is that this reaction force that used to be here, RB, this is now, oh, it's awful, this is now zero, okay? So make sure you remember that and picture it as we've kind of done it here. Now, similar scenario, we've got the same two uh, supports and this beam again, but if I take the elephant and put him on the end of the beam this time over here, then what's going to happen? Because he's heavy again, potentially he's going to tip it downwards and we're going to end up with a situation like this. So what we've got now is we've got it tilting about B. And when it's tilting about B, what we've got to think about is, well, actually the rod is barely in contact with A on the other side. So this reaction force that used to be here, we can say is now equal to zero. Okay. So I hope that clears um, everything up for you in terms of tilting. And that's what we've got to use to solve the following problems. So here's the first one. Let's get reading. We've got a uniform rod AB. It's got a length of six meters and a mass of 70 kilograms. Okay, perfect. Let's fill this in. So we've got A, we've got B. It's six meters overall. So um, maybe let's just put six just way down the bottom there. And it is uniform, so this is great news. We're back to uniform rods. And with a uniform rod, remember it acts exactly at the center, okay? So the, the weight of the, the rod is gonna be put at the center, which will be three meters. But let's put a bit more info on before we put that three meters onto there. Now we've got two supports, C and D. So here's C, here's D. And um, if those are supports, we're gonna have reaction forces at each one. So R, C, and R, D. A to C, we're told is two meters but A to D is 4.6. Okay, so what does that mean? That means this here has got to be 2.6 meters. And now what we can do is we can put our center of mass in because that's going to be three meters. So that's maybe around here. So we can say that down there is 70 G and the whole distance from there to there is going to be three meters. So I'll fill that in. Now we've got a particle. Now what's happening here? This particle of mass m kilograms is placed at B, so right the way down the other end. So big blob at B, there we go. And that there is m kilograms. So what we're going to put is mg on there. And then we've been told now that the, uh, the rod is about to tilt about D. Okay, so if it's tilting about D, we should write this out, right? So tilting about D, then what that means is that the reaction at the other support, so RC, must equal zero. Okay, so that's super important. Make sure you jot that down. And now what we've got to do is calculate the value of M. So calculate how heavy this thing actually is. So let's crack on. This is a great diagram. We've got everything labeled. 
we'll start with upwards forces equals downwards forces. So we've got RC plus RD is equal to 70G plus MG. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that RC is equal to zero. So effectively, you can go eh, eh, cross that out. So you've got RD is equal to 70G plus MG. So we'll just keep a hold of that formula there, just for good routine. Now, the next thing we should do is take some moments. Now, we've got to be really, really careful with where we take moments about here. Let's think about this. I'm going to say that we should take moments about D this time. And have a think about why I've said that. So if we take moments about D, I'll put here M, D to show we're taking moments about D. If we're taking it about there, we need to consider the moment created by this MG, by this 70G, and by RC. But now remember, RC is equal to zero. So that means we don't need to think about RC. And because we're taking moments about D, we don't even need to include RD. Okay, because it's at that point. So all we need to do is consider two forces. I mean, that's that's perfect, right? So we just got to consider this one here and this one here, and then we're all done. Now, we need to do a tiny bit of work, because if we are taking moments uh, about D, we need to get this distance in here and that distance on the end there. So we need to fill those in, right? So let's do some, do some calculator work. What have we got here? Well, we've got two meters. This is 2.6, so that's 4.6 overall. That, that means this has got to be 1.4 meters. And now this in here, what have we got? Let's have a think. Well, um, we know that from here to here is three meters, which means that from here to here would be one meter. And therefore this distance should be 1.6 meters. And there we go, we've got all our distances and we're all set to go. So let's get cracking. We'll go with clockwise equals anti-clockwise again. And for clockwise, we're going to have mg multiplied by 1.4. So that's 1.4 mg is equal to now anti-clockwise. We've got 70g times by 1.6. So 70g multiplied by 1.6. Now, what does this come out as? Let's just quickly multiply this. So we've got 70 times 1.6. 70 times uh, 1.6, that comes out as uh, 112g on this side. And we've got 1.4 mg over here. Strike out the Gs, we got 1.4m is equal to 112. Divide that by 1.4, and that is brilliant. That comes out exactly as 80. And there we go. So you've got the value of m, that's just 80. So this here is 80g. Perfect. Now let's move it on. Another example. This time we've got a uniform rod AB. So A to B. And this time it's got a length of 14 meters. So Left to right, there we go, we've got 14 meters. Um, we've got uh, two supports, C and D. So this is C, that one's D. And A to C is two meters. So this here, two meters. And A to D is 10 meters, which means that this, I think we can just fill that in as eight meters, right? Because that will give us um, 10 in total. Um, it is uniform and this, the weight was W. So at seven meters, we need to have its weight coming downwards. So let's say, well, seven is going to be like an extra, what, five meters into here. So we'll say that there, and we'll go W Newtons, just over there. Now we should fill in some reaction forces. We've got RC and RD. Now, what have they told us? They told us a particle of mass 60 kilograms is placed at A and the rod is about to tilt around C. OK, so we've got a particle being placed at A. So there's A uh, and it's 60 kilograms. So we can put 60 G's coming down there. And they've told us that when there is that particle there, it's going to tilt around C. So if it's tilting around C, and that means the reaction at D should be equal to zero, as we learned earlier. So do remember that. Now, um, that's all they really said for the time being. And then they said the particle is then removed and a different particle is placed 
at B of mass m kilograms, and the rod is now on the point of tilting around D, calculate the maximum mass of the particle at B. Well, I think from what we've got here, if we're clever enough, what we can do is actually work out uh, the weight of the uniform rod. So I think that's what we've got to do first, right? So let's take moments about somewhere in the current situation. I'm going to say that we should take moments around C. And again, why have I said that? Because that means we need to include 60G. We need to include W. We don't need to include RC because that's at that point. And we know RD is equal to zero. So actually, we we'll only need to look at two of these forces. So I'm just going to go and take moments straight away around C. And I'm going to say clockwise is equal to anti-clockwise. So clockwise is going to be uh, the W there. So that's W times by 5. Let's just put 5W. And then anti-clockwise will be 60G times by 2. So that's 60G multiplied by 2. So we've got 5W is equal to 120 Gs. And that means W is going to equal, divided by 5, we get 24G. Um, now we probably want to turn that into uh, 24 times 9.8. So we've got 235.2 as its weight in newtons. So um, let's maybe fill that in and let's say that's 235.2 newtons, right? So I turned it into newtons because they wanted weight over there. So now that we've got that, um, we can go on to the second part of this question, which is where it talks about the particle being removed and then a different particle placed at B. So this particle at A is now gone, so we need to get rid of it. Bye-bye, that's gone. And uh, there's now a different particle that's being placed um, at B. So here's B, we've got a new particle placed over here, and they haven't told us um, the mass of this. They said it's just M. So we need Mg going downwards. Now when it's placed over here, they've told us now that the rod is on the point of tilting around D. So if it's gonna tilt around D, then that means the reaction at C is now zero. Okay, so. We need to write that down. So I'm going to put here now RC is equal to zero. And have a guess um, where we're going to take moments around now. Well, we're going to take moments around D. And hopefully you spotted that. Because if we take moments around D, we don't need to include RD. And because RC is equal to zero, we don't need to include that either. So again, we're looking at these two forces only. Now, a distance from there to there, we need to work that out, right? So if this is 5 metres, this is 8 metres, it means that that gap in the middle there must be 3 metres. And now we need this little bit on the end here. Well, that's 2, that's 8, and the whole distance was 14, which means that this bit hanging off the end here must be an extra 4 metres. And there we go, we filled in everything, we're all ready to roll. So clockwise is equal to, I'll put anti-clock, and clockwise is going to be mg times by 4, so I'm just going to put 4mg for that one, and anti-clockwise will have 235.2 uh, times by 3. So to find mg now, we're going to need to uh, times that, divide it by 4, so 235.2 times by 3 equals that, divide by 4 gives us 176.4 and then we want just m so we also need to divide by g so divide by 9.8 oh beautiful and that comes out as just 18 and there we go so we've got our mass as 18 so what we're saying is that is 18 g perfect okay and hopefully you've got that and if you have it's time for you to have a go at a question for yourself and so here's a practice one for you have a quick read through it, uh, make a nice diagram again, and um, I'll catch up with you in a couple of seconds. Okay, right, we're ready to go. Now then, um, we've got a, a non-uniform rod this time. Oh, okay, so non-uniform, center of mass, we don't know where it is, right? So we've got A, B, the whole thing is 15 meters, so there to there, 15 meters and a mass of 30 kilograms, we'll fill that in shortly, hopefully. Um, and it's got two supports, A and C, so this is obviously C, we'll have reactions at A, 
and at C. So there we go, fill those in. And they've told us B to C is four meters. Okay, so B to C, that there is four meters, which means that this in here must be 11 meters. And now what we can do is get rid of that 15 down the bottom. There we go. Perfect. Now, uh, what else have they told us? They told us a particle of mass 60 kilograms is placed on the rod at B. And the rod is on the point of tilting about C. Okay, right. So if it's tilting about C, what can we say? We can say RA is equal to zero, right? Perfect. Now, the particle is placed at B, so let's draw it in there. We've got 60 G coming downwards. And what we need to do is work out the distance of the center of mass from C. Okay, so the center of mass, I mean, we need to think about where roughly we could put this, right? Um, I'm thinking if we put the center of mass here, you know, it's probably probably not the best place to put it. I would probably put it just on this side here. So you've got one fourth maybe on each side, but who knows, right? We'll have to do the calculation and actually work out what happens. So I'm going to assume for now that the center of mass is going to be there and that will have to be 30 Gs going downwards. Now, what we're trying to do is work out this distance here from C to the center of mass. So I'm going to label that as X for now because I don't know what it is. Now, we're going to need to take some moments. So uh, moments, moments, moments. What should we do with our moments? I think the most sensible place to take moments about would have been C. Why? Well, because at C, we don't need to include RC, and we know that RA is equal to zero. So we're only looking at this and this, so the 30G and the 60G. And I think that's it, we're ready to go. So clockwise is equal to anti clockwise and let's just make a note to say that we're actually taking moments about c here and now the clockwise moments will be 60 g times by 4 so 60 g multiplied by 4 and then anti-clockwise will just be 30 g times by x so we've got 60 g times by 4 what's that uh, 240 g's and then 30 g x on this side strike those out and we've got 240 is equal to 30 x and then divide those and we'll get x is equal to 8. Okay, so what have we actually found? Oh, interesting. So that distance was 11, which means the center of mass was 8 away from this point. So in actual fact, maybe maybe more there, isn't it? 30 g is where the um, center of mass is for this beam. Okay, good, fantastic. So um, that's part one done. We've got one more on tilting to go. So um, in, the, in, in the meantime, while I uh, prepare that, if you've learned everything you wanted to learn from this, give us uh, a like and subscribe and hopefully I'll catch you in um, the next tilting video, part two.